Okay, the recording has started, and this is the January 28th, 2020 Rook Community Meeting. And we'll start as usual on our milestone checkups. Uh, I know, I think it was right after the last community meeting, we did both a 1.1 release and a 1.2 patch release as well. I think it was 1.2.2 uh, and 1.1.9 maybe. Uh, right. so, yep, so I don't, Travis, or there, is there any more 1.1s uh, that you're aware of or is uh, the, the ninth patch there kind of the end of the line for right now? Or? Right. I wasn't planning on any, on any more. Uh, last week, I think I saw one merged or backport to 1.1. Uh, I can't remember what that was. Seb, do you remember which one that was? Um, or am I thinking of the wrong thing here? But I don't know that, yeah, I don't know if we need to do a release for that or if, or what the need was for that one. Yes, uh, they normally go in Oh, order. sorry, yeah, sorry. Um, oh, go ahead, yeah, I'm having, There we go. I'm having issues with, with Zoom. This thing is, this thing is so uh, not practical. Anyways, uh, <laughs> no, I don't remember it, but I feel like we have a bunch of patches that are worth uh, releasing so uh, maybe the end of this week something like yeah, that one dot one dot two definitely i guess the question was for one dot one oh sorry yeah one. no no then i guess yeah cool I let's uh, let's let's take a look at the the uh one dot two board then and we can uh see talk about that for a second then yeah because we definitely have more in progress on the board here for the one dot two uh branch any any ones in particular that are um of risk or of note that we want to discuss in this forum um, I don't know that there's much to discuss here. Uh, one, I haven't paid attention to this or caught up with this board yet this week, but one that looks like it's missing is updating this Ceph CSI 2.0, which was just released last week. So just making that the default version in Rook. Um, so there's a PR open that's about ready for merge that Madhu is working on. He's not in this meeting. Um, but the thought is in master, we'll make CSI 2.0 the default. And then when we backport it to 1.2, we'll make it available or simple to enable, but the default will still be the previous version of CSI, Ceph CSI, just because it's such a big update to do in a patch release. And the patch release also requires um, RBAC changes. So for patch releases, uh, I don't want to require RBAC updates, but if somebody wants to try it out, they can do this additional step to enable the new RBAC with CSI 2.0. Um, so that is one thing that um, is in consideration for one or for the next patch release of, um, of 1.2 later this week that I'd like to get in. Um, Otherwise, I don't know, Seb, any other any thoughts on specific things we need to get in this week or just the end of the week is a good timeline in your mind? Yeah. Yeah. Because we we have uh, we have one more patch that has the backport label set, uh, which I believe has waited enough <laughs> so we can merge it today, back pull it today, and then uh, yeah, releasing by the end of the week sounds good. Is that on the yeah. board, Seb? The canary pod? Yeah, the canary pod, yeah. That's the one? Okay, cool. Yeah. Is that a, is oh, that, uh, it's open and should be in like review in progress or is it? Uh, in, in review, yeah. Okay. It's done, yeah. I think Blaine needs to get a final look into it. Yeah. And then I think we'll be ready. Um, the, the other one in the in progress column, I'm not sure about that one. Anyway, so we should figure that out. All right, cool. So then uh, we'll plan on uh, like doing a patch release by the end of the uh, end of the week. Yeah, so that's one dot two dot three, isn't it? One two three. Yes, one two three, and not related to the patch release necessarily, but I just saw in the in review column there your security um, document. Are we about ready to update? Yeah, let's, uh, I have a whole section uh, in the agenda later on for graduation stuff. So we can go through everything there together. Cool. 
Uh, it looks like my uh, the space bar on my Mac uh, keyboard is uh, a little sticky today here. I wonder if there's some pretzel crumbs that got in there. So my space <laughs> key isn't working too great today. <laughs> That's always frustrating. Too many snacks. Huh? Yeah, too many snacks. I'm, I'm hungry. All right. Uh, and then do we, uh, is there uh, a 1.3 like milestone in, in board worth, worth mentioning right now yet? Uh, I can't. We haven't really like organized that yet, it. have we? Yeah, yeah we've been we focused really on like batches for, for one two and three. Yeah, or sorry, one two and a one one. So, yeah, I don't. If there's any uh, for, information that anybody wants okay. to talk about here, I'm. I think I took an initial pass of this a couple weeks ago, actually, but I. Yeah, it needs more attention. Okay. Okay, we can follow up on that. That's, not a problem. All right, so we will uh, plan on the patch release for the end of the week. Yeah, actually one thing to add to the agenda, maybe Sebastian could give us an update on OSD changes, but we could add that to the end. I'll do that. The OSD changes for 1.3? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can go, yeah, you can go ahead and add that. Okay. Uh, all right, so we will move ahead along to the next item uh, that is on the agenda here. And feel free, anybody, to add agenda items as we're going here, and I'll just go ahead and approve them to, to the agenda. Uh, so the next item that we have here written down is a graduation, Rook graduation uh, status update for uh, graduating with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So everything is being tracked in this uh, shared public to do document. Uh, so as Travis um, <clears throat> mentioned, we uh, there is a pull request uh, open for the security disclosure process. Um, the there's a couple like email aliases that need to get uh, created there, and a couple of feedback items that need to be replied to, um, but nothing super major there. Uh, Travis, uh, we, we took a stab at a draft of uh, updates to uh, governance and the steering committee. And uh, Travis opened a pull request on that, which is 4719, um, to uh, kind of change some of the ways that, uh, that voting and, um, you know, the, the project is, um, from a maintainer perspective is uh, you know, strategically and um, you know, uh, governed and, um, you know, and how decisions are made, I suppose. Uh, Travis, do you want to talk through some of those, the, the highlights of the, of the change there? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the, yeah, overall, the thought is that, so that we've had this steering committee where the steering committee um, the overall project direction, um, not at the specific storage provider level, but really at the project level, like what do we want to accomplish long term with the project type of questions. Um, like probably discuss you know, what does it mean to add new storage providers, how should we uh, factor things out so other storage providers can be added e more easily or as separate repos or whatever. Um, that doesn't, the details of that don't need to be worked out by the steering committee, but that's just an example of something that steering committee could vote on potentially um, as project direction. The, and then we would have project maintainers, which basically we'd be expanding our maintainer definition from what it is today to include storage provider maintainers. Um, so those who have push access to the repo are those who would be officially maintainers of the project. Uh, I think currently that would mean we would have, there'd be eight of us. Um, and let's see what else. There's, um, oh, Bassam would be moving to a, um, not retired, um, Sorry, I'm just having a, a moment here. <laughs> hey, um, I and mean, I've actually wondered how do you say that word? Is it uh, emeritus? Is that how you emeritus, pronounce that yes. word? Thank you, emeritus. I, just I, I don't know word. if it was like emeritus or like emeritus. I have no idea how to pronounce that word. Yeah, emeritus that member of main, of uh, maintainers, which means well, yeah. Well, he he just doesn't have time for the project. Um, 
So that's part of it. Yeah, yeah, and, and then another big change there too is that you know currently with the conflict resolution in voting process for the project, which I think we've only used like one time, um, or you know to when to add or remove um, maintainers or people with push access. Uh, so it's not, you know, it's not a heavily contested uh, or, you know, lots of conflicts in the project. So it's not a process that has to get used very often. But a big change to right. it, though, is that the uh, that we had a concept of senior maintainers and uh, standard maintainers. Then, you know, senior maintainers had a voting uh, two votes and regular standard maintainers had only one vote. But we're doing away with that and that the steering committee, everyone that, who has a seat on the steering committee gets a single vote. Um, so it's uh, a little bit less complicated and a little bit more balanced uh, of, of um, the decision making process across all uh, representatives of the project. Um, so I think that's that's a, a good change for the, the general community as well. Um, and yeah, I've had a couple of discussions with people since opening the PR. So I'm going to um, hopefully make a few more updates in the next day or two. Be great to get some feedback. There have been zero comments so far on it. Yeah, are, there's, are there any big, uh, big, big changes, Travis, that uh, from people you talk to? Um, not. I need to read through the the discussion again. It, it was an email with well, Josh Burkus. Do you know him? He, he's, yeah, I know Josh. Yeah, of course, for sure. Yeah, a lot of experience with governance and Kubernetes and stuff. So cool, good great, input there. yeah, that's awesome. Um, Do you want to add that to the PR uh, as feedback directly? Uh, we yeah we just had a discussion initially before he added the the public feedback so um, he did he did uh, add it to the PR he has not added it to the PR. oh, oh okay so, okay yeah he's he's more than welcome to anyone is welcome to add add comments to this PR exactly yeah so I just need to follow up with him and um, yeah and, and then and then yeah, yeah from working with you on the initial draft of this uh, you know I I was happy with where we landed on the draft so I don't have large feedback myself because I've already reviewed it a couple times beforehand. Okay. Cool. And right. I'm resisting the temptation to merge it since Alex approved it. So <laughs> we do need official. Yes, we, th yeah, this does follow. Yeah, ch changes to the governance do follow the official voting process. Or the, so that's, yeah, don't, don't get too trigger happy over there, Tr Travis. Yeah, and actually, Jared, if you want to just mark it as changes requested until we have the votes, that might be a good thing. So somebody isn't tempted to merge it. Oh, uh, that's that's fair. That's Seb and I have done on that on each other's PRs a couple of times. That's totally fair. I'm mashing the space key really hard to make it work. <laughs> Cool. Sounds good. Go, great work, though, Travis. Uh, okay, and then uh, CII badge. There's not really much update on that one, uh, but you know, there, there's not a whole lot left on it as well. And it's mostly around security stuff, which we did a big push for with the disclosure process and the audit. So um, I think we'll be in good shape with that one. Uh, production testimonials. Uh, we have sent out. Uh, we crafted a, a Rook usage survey and uh, sent out that link in Slack and on Twitter and such. And we have about 30 responses so far, uh, which is pretty decent um, because when you, at least when we did the incubation proposal, I, um, I think we selected like the top five or so to use as specific testimonials and to do a little bit more of a dive into their usage and um, stat statistics and quotes and testimonials and stuff like that. So having 30 responses uh, already is, is pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. But you know, still a call to action uh, for um, you know, responding to the survey or if you know anybody who is using Rook in production who hasn't responded, um, you know, get in touch with them and would love to learn more about what they're doing or if, they, you know, if we can use their, uh, any quotes from them or anything as a testimonial when we are presenting to the technical oversight committee. So that would be really useful. Uh, due diligence documentation is basically just this whole book. But you said something? Yeah, a question about the the uh, survey. Is there a way we can see the comments uh, or just who has who has responded so I know who to ping, et cetera? Uh, 
I know, I'm not sure because I, I just created it with SurveyMonkey and I don't I don't have an, like a, a paid plan or anything like that. So I don't know. It might have been an, a not the best decision and I apologize for that. But I don't know if I can share access to it because it's, you know, just a free thing. But, okay, um, sure. but yeah, pick so you can me, just see it. Yeah, yeah I, I can see them all. And may, maybe I can try to get you access or like give you the password or something to it too because that's the only, I don't, you know, it's my personal account, but I don't, you know, I'm not creating a whole bunch of personal survey monkey surveys and sending them out to people that i need to keep private or anything <laughs> so um, that should be fine i'll just bring a few people who just want to make cool sure they, cool cool um, uh and then uh we a sponsor so getting sponsorship from the technical oversight committee member uh you know we, we needed one sponsor uh and joe beta liz rice and alexis richardson are all leaving uh their term is up i think tomorrow on the 29th uh, there, so we'll be getting three new members of, on the TOC. Um, there is a, a maintainer voting uh, that is ongoing right now. So if you are a main, the official maintainer of a CNCF project, you are allowed to vote for the next uh, TOC member. And I don't know, uh, Alexander and Travis, if you guys have already done this, uh, but Basam and I did it yesterday. But you can vote for the next TOC uh, member by sending an email to this uh, this list uh, here. Got it. I have not done that. Cool. Uh, and then, uh, so Sheng Li is uh, Basam. He's uh, Alibaba. Uh, I can't read the director of, uh, I can't remember actually what his position is at Alibaba. But um, uh, Basam uh, mentioned him as a good potential uh, as, as a sponsor. And he, he Sheng is not uh, leaving the position right now he's and he's already elected so he's there's no turnover or churn for his seat so he may be a good person to reach out to uh, about sponsoring us uh, sponsoring Rook. Mm -hmm. well, does, does he have I guess storage background there or some I don't, I don't know sharing my the project or? myself I know he does a lot of uh, um, like cloud architecture stuff uh, at, at at Alibaba, uh, you know, public cloud provider. So for in China, so um, I don't, I don't know specifically what his uh, areas of, you know, deep dive expertise are. Myself, uh, Basam, Basam mentioned him. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And then we got to present uh, all that stuff. So uh, you know, we've been ramping up on this. We're spending more time on it, and uh, we need to continue, continue doing that. So you know, this week we'll make another push and try to follow up on all these things here and keep, keep moving forward. And with the goal of uh, having approval before um, Amsterdam. Right. As far as Sig storage, I wonder if before we officially present, if we should go like to the meeting before, two weeks before that, and just prep people or ask for early feedback yeah and we, and we can reach out we to, ask for final yeah. yeah we have we have some good relationships with uh some of the the um the leadership and and you know heavy contributors in there like sad sad ali and michelle um right. and 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 uh jing and Shing. yeah so it's, we should there's we, we could definitely reach out to people and kind of get some feelers there i just don't want to be surprised by um pushback or whatever like oh you have to do this or this yeah. be, you don't want to be surprised by how awesome they think we are <laughs> right <laughs> at least in the broader storage sig community there i mean we have history there of how they weren't happy right but some yeah the core people i'm not worried about it as much uh, just early feedback is always better yeah for sure agreed yep uh okay so that's graduation stuff uh fun stuff going on there <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there, and if anybody has anything else to add about any of these topics, um, feel free to jump in and interrupt. Uh, but I'll just keep on going here. So the Google Summer of Code um, program is, uh, you know, open for submissions. There, the due date is uh, next week, I think, February fifth. Um, we, uh, I think, some people were mentioning some ideas, but I don't think anyone has written up proposals for them yet. So if, uh, if anyone has, you know, a project idea that they would love to get a, um, you know, Google Summer of Code um, participant, a university student to spend their time, you know, two to three months over the summer working on and getting invested into the community, um, you know, let's follow up together uh, and get a proposal uh, put together for that. The last two years have been very successful with that, with uh, 
with you know creating the NFS operator and uh, doing multi-home networking. So it's always been a really valuable and, and uh, rewarding program to participate in. And uh, we'll, if we want to do it again and we have good ideas for it, the due date is uh, by next week, February 5th. Uh, so th this is a topic I wanted to bring up because I'm a bit confused about it, honestly. So Rook.io, uh, you know, the main um, like marketing documentation site here with our awesome graphics and everything. Uh, it's currently, it's uh, hosted by GitHub pages. Uh, so, you know, you check things into the GitHub repo and then that, you know, hosts the static site right there. Um, so the first thing to note here is that the Rook.io, uh, the certificate for that site was uh, expires on Friday uh, or was expiring on Friday. And we had to jump through some hoops to figure out how to update that. And so the DNS management of Rook.io moved to Netlify uh, over the summer, I think last summer. And um, to get Amazon's certificate manager that issues the cert to be able to automatically renew it, we had to update the DNS records to be able to point to the right thing, to be able to you know, do the auto renewal of the cert, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's done now. So the certificate is renewed for another year. So we're in good shape with that. But the part I don't understand though myself personally, and so maybe somebody has some more history here, is why the, where this issue came from or what was the original justification for moving the whole Rook.io site to be hosted in Netlify. Um, when it was open, there was no description and there's no justification on it. So I'm not sure really why this needs to be done or if this is an investment we really need to make. Um, Travis, do you have a memory of why this is needed? No, I went through the PR and there was one comment that provided some justification later now i can't remember what it was though but it didn't it seemed like it was totally optional um or just to have a more something about a more dynamic site than, but i don't I know, know who, why we would need it. where that came from like who is that something that chris a wanted um i don't remember it wasn't chris that made the comment i'm thinking of I need to open that issue. But yeah, let's follow up and see if, yeah, it doesn't seem like a requirement. It's sort of a nice to have was the impression I got. But I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, it, it's, yeah, any, if it makes things more confusing and difficult to manage, then that's not ideal. Um, Cause it was a pretty simple setup before. Uh, the DNS management that that did get moved to Netlify, so there's no you know, there's no point in like changing that. The only back. thing that we needed. Yeah, uh, yeah, because I mean, because Luke Luke Perkins has been talking about you know the site itself is you know, he's got a, a, a fork of Rook.io's website and it's running up on in Netlify itself. So you know this is rookio.netlify.com and this is the, you know the regular rook.io so there's been an effort to create you know host the entire site over at netlify and I, I i just don't understand why or where that motivation came from is the website currently hosted through github pages or yeah that's correct alexander yes uh, i see sorry remember the correct um well yeah i think we should follow up with him okay uh, cool. okay Sorry, right. I don't know who is Luke. I, I he's uh, he's with the CNCF. Uh, I think he's one of their uh, either a developer or IT guy over there. But um, okay. he, he's he's a uh, contributor to the Rook.io site. He's contributed some other uh, fixes with you know icons and links and stuff like that. Okay. Cool. Yep. Uh, okay. Cool. So we'll follow up and figure out if that really is necessary or not. Uh, the but we all the Rook maintainer team does have access to manage the DNS records uh, that are hosted in, in Netlify. So that is something that we already can do and had to do to get the cert renewed again uh, and get into good standing so that we don't expire and lose our SSL uh, capabilities um, on Friday. Jared. Yes. Could you send me the link where I would be able to log into? The system, the Netlify. It's a, it's a net uh, issue, um, uh, Alexander. Uh, like here, Chris Chris put it into the uh, issue oh, number I sixty. See. Okay, got yep. it. So you can just, just click that link. Okay, got it. Thanks. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, two more things, Jared. So with the certificate, every year are we gonna, are we going to have to update this, or is it no, no? And so the problem. 
Yeah, the, so we have auto renewal set up uh, with Amazon Cert Manager. So up, Upbound is is paying for the certificate, uh, and so we had the Amazon Cert Manager with our Upbound account uh, doing an auto renewal, but the DNS was messed up, uh, to, so that it couldn't, you know, go to find the right place to do a renewal of it automatically. And so we were getting notifications or, you know, errors saying it, it can't do it and it, the certificate is going to expire. So we updated the DNS so that it'll automatically do it for next year, uh, just fine. Okay, that's cool. Yep, yep, we're all good there. And then second thing, I just found the comment I was thinking of that the last comment Luke made on that that issue, he's basically saying that Netlify has a deploy preview feature. Um, so basically, if you have a PR, you can see what the site will look like before you actually commit it. Um, so that nice, a nice benefit. Um, but and he says no code would be required. It's just a matter of moving it so for what it's worth. A matter of moving like it. So I don't know what that means. I don't know what it involves either still. <laughs> but, um. Okay, so, so Luke seems to be, the, Luke Perkins seems to be the one that knows what's going on. Right. Okay, so, so we will get more information from him then. Okay, uh, Seb, do you, uh, you're making suggestions here. I will. Yes. Prove you're done typing. I hit. I hit check. I hit, I hit check. Yes, I am. All right, buddy. It's uh, your turn to talk about these OSD changes, then, my friend. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so I'm super happy to see that we we merged it uh, last week. Uh, it was a it was a big refactor. Um, it's good to see so many lines of codes uh, being removed. I guess um, it's all Jared's code gone. <laughs> yeah, all of your code, man, is gone. <laughs> oh, man, I'm just going to... Sorry about that. <laughs> I may as well retire now. Why even work in this industry? <laughs> uh, no, what, I think we have another word for retiring, but I forgot about it. <laughs> um, so with that, I also opened an issue that actually describes uh, it's... Um, well, the issue is linked in the PR. So uh, it's now it's probably closed, but um, I guess it's really informative with regards to uh, what is expected and uh, when, you, when it comes to upgrades. So I think it's the second one. Yeah, that, so looks, I tried, like, that looks like a good write-up of it all here. Okay. Yeah, I tried to summarize what will be happening as soon as you reach uh, 1.3. Um, Basically, we're removing support for a bunch of things, um, mainly OSDs running on directories. And as part of that, OSDs also uh, that are running uh, Filestore. I think that's uh, something that hasn't been done anyways because Save Volume has always defaulted to Blue Store. So I don't think there are a bunch of people that uh, changed that value to from Blue Store to to Five Store, uh, because well, we there is no real benefit of, of doing this. So uh, it's not actually a a, a breaking change at this point, um, meaning that once you upgrade to one three, uh, all of your OSD's deployment will keep on running, uh, and simply because the the filtering mechanism now is based on block devices. Um, and if, even if you pass a directory, this, this won't be accepted and this won't be interpreted. So once the prepare job looks at, looks, looks at the OSDs that are deployed, then it will basically do nothing uh, for the OSDs that are actually running at this point. Uh, also, we don't remove OSDs anymore, so uh, no chances that we will end up into a weird condition where OSDs are removed automatically. So once people upgrade to 1.3, uh, if they have OSDs running on directories, then those OSDs will continue to work because that deployment will never be upgraded. It's now, uh, it's really outside of Rook's control. Um, so it's, uh, I think it's a good thing uh, as a transition path. Uh, also, with that patch, we introduced what well, was introduced before and backported to one two two. It's already mentioned in that too, in that issue too. Uh, we we implemented support support for partitions because we we heard that having the the ability to run OSDs on partitions was a good middle ground was a good was a good compromise. Uh, 
if if you don't always have a fully dedicated block device for for Rook. So we're still miss missing some some backports, um, but in the next Ceph release, uh, which is not 14.2.7 because 14.2.7 will be a CVE release only, but 14.2.8, and I have to update the code for that, will uh, likely receive all the missing backports so that uh, people can start using partitions uh, and doing the transition from directory to block devices. What's the CVE release? Is that just uh, bug fixes, security, security fixes, security, security fixes. fixes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, and so, and, and this will uh, this will all be included in the release notes uh, as well. Is there any other um, avenues of uh, publishing or you know sh like getting this information out? You think we could uh, translate that into a blog post? Uh, we discussed that during the last community mm -hmm. meeting. So if that's something that everyone still agrees on, then I can I can translate that uh, into into a blog post to draft, and then we can publish it so that people are aware of the biggest the biggest change of of uh, book one three. But if we believe that's enough, uh, then we can keep it as, as is. Uh, it's up to you, I think. And I think there are a few things in my mind we can do. So there's the upgrade guide, of course, will include instructions on how to deal with this because clearly during upgrade to 1.3, they'll be impacted. And then also after the the step release comes out with the partition support, I think we should get the word out or in the 1.2 documentation as far as how people can start transitioning even before the 1.3 upgrade. Especially since, you know, well, after you upgrade, there's no more support for the uh, directories, right? Uh, they'll continue yeah, yeah. running, but they'll never be upgraded, right? Yeah, and the idea is really for people to start the transition during the one two cycle, as well, not yeah. not wait for one three to be released, right? Um, so the yeah, we need to get that into one dot two documentation. Uh, as soon as partition support is available, I think that's the right timeline. Um, otherwise, yeah, blog posts would help after it's possible to um, point people at it. Or if we just have it in the documentation, maybe we don't need the doc blog post. I don't know yet. Um, we can think about it. Yeah, that, that all sounds pretty reasonable, honestly. All right, thanks for uh, thanks for sharing that, uh, Seb, and and for writing that up uh, for us as well. I appreciate that. Yeah, sure. Okay, and um, the PR that we had to the, that I had added here to discuss, we already addressed in the graduation uh, section, um, so that is open for anyone's comments or uh, feedback on that one. And um, so with that, I will open the floor here if there's any other uh, topics of conversation that anybody else wanted to bring up before we uh, adjourn for the week here, then I'll wait a couple seconds to see if anybody wants to jump in with that. Uh, one small thing for the people going to Frostum this weekend. Um, well, if anyone from the call is going, I'm going to talk about Rook. And I also have some Rook stickers with me. So if you're there, well, feel free to get yourself a sticker. Mm -hmm. Where Where is that, um, Alex? It's in uh, Belgium, Brussels. Oh, it's in Brussels? In Brussels, yeah. Right on. And that's this weekend? Yes, it's this weekend. Very cool. Awesome, man. And you have the flag, right? Yeah, I have the flag. I'll, <laughs> I'll bring it with me. Of course. Cool, yeah, good luck in your talk there, Alexander. Thank you. Right on. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up for the week here, adjourn the call. Thank you everybody for joining I have one in. more thing. Oh, okay, uh, Sebastian. Just, yeah, real quick. It's regarding CI and resources. I just wanted to check um, 
how many workers do we have currently? Because uh, I see that the repo is getting more and more contributions and uh, the CI is sometimes having difficulties to, to keep up with all the changes. So uh, I guess my question is, I was wondering if we could increase somehow the number of workers available for, for the CI so that we can speed up contributions. I'm, I'm pretty sure we have five workers today, but since I don't think it, well, like if they're inactive when we don't need them, you know, is there any reason not to increase it to like eight or something just to make sure we're not slowed down? Um, yeah, I guess if, but if we can have some, if we have a mechanism already in place for burst, then that's that's perfect. So if we can increase that worker count uh, when many things are happening in parallel, typically before mm -hmm. releases uh, and stuff like that, uh, the amount of uh, PRs that we run plus the backports uh, requires CI runtime. So exactly. And now we have we were testing. We were doing backports for one one and for one two as well, and then soon for one three. So. Uh, even though we won't be keeping doing backports but for one one, I think we're kind of doing running the CI uh, more often. If we keep two the the two previous uh, stable releases uh, for backports, so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jared, is there? There's no reason not to increase the workers, right? No, not that I not that I know of. Um, we, I mean, as Sebastian was talking about there, like you know, and, and you too, that if uh, you know they spin down and they're not just sitting idle and in, in consuming resources or running up the bill for it um, when they're not being used and they're only used on demand, then you know that's fairly reasonable. Yep, and you have access to make that change, uh, Travis, right? Yeah, I just have to figure out again where it is uh, yeah have we have we looked at the what the maybe take this off, offline as well but have we looked at what the bill for that is uh recently to see like kind of what the charges are for that account i haven't um <laughs> in, in the in the past i know you know it's on the upbound account and i thought that since it was a startup account i thought there wasn't much worry about charges but um or free account sort of thing i'm not sure if that's at all true anymore but no, yeah, we don't have any. It's not free. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll, probably, I'll probably take a look at that, just see what the bill is looking like these days. Great. Okay, cool. Uh, anything else? Not for me, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Seb. All righty, then we'll go ahead and adjourn for the week. Thanks, everybody, for joining in, and we'll see you online. All right, have thanks. All right, have fun bye in bye Brussels, you. Alexander. Bye-bye. Thanks, we will do. Bye. Bye.